Hello again! First off, I want to apologize for the poor audio quality. My headset is in repair, so I have to use a backup right now. Anyway, let me show you this nice little dirt hut here. Isn't it beautiful? Let's make a clone of it, but I don't want to use the clone command because that takes so much time. So let's instead place down two item frames here. Get some particles. Um, the item frames are apparently locked now. Let's copy it. 22, uh, 27 blocks, seems about right. 3 by 3 by 3. And now let's place down a silverfish here. We we'll get more particles. And paste. Nice. Uh, let's make another copy. Paste. Cool. Let's make a small village here. Uh, another one here, but maybe let's remove the ceiling this time. I want to be able to look inside. So copy the new selection. And you see, it's smaller now. We can just paste it and we get the smaller version. Now, how does it work? The idea is actually pretty simple. Instead of cloning exactly the area from here to here, I clone an area of exactly 32 by 32 by 32 blocks, starting here. So I clone everything that might be in here, standing around, including those blocks here, whatever I want. And this complete area will then be paced in the spawn chunks on this bedrock platform here. So I demonstrate that quickly. Copy. You can see exact copy of that 32 by 32 by 32 cube on this platform now. Uh, by the way, I interrupted the process down there so you can see this before it gets deleted, because that's the next part. We only wanted the selected area from this part of the house to this corner here. So everything else needs to be deleted now by filling it with air blocks. So let's get down there quickly. Redstone activated, we get the message how many blocks we actually cloned. That gets um, determined while we delete the blocks here. And we can see the replica of the part of the house that we actually wanted to clone. The only thing that's left on here in this corner of the bedrock platform. So now we have an exact copy of our targeted blocks in this bedrock platform. And all we need to do now for pasting it is cloning the complete cube of 32 by 32 by 32 blocks again on this bedrock platform to the position which we marked previously using our silverfish. And for the second clone command then I use the masked mode. Let me demonstrate that quickly. Um, wait a second. If you look at the clone command we have uh, three points that we need to give it. The first two points are determining the area which we want to clone and the third point determines where we want to place the clone blocks. And then we have the option to add a mode. By default this is the replace mode if you don't enter anything in the back here. We also can choose the masked mode. And this is responsible for ignoring all air blocks. In other words, um, if we look at this dot hut here, there are two air blocks inside. If I just clone this dot hut like it is into the ground here, with a normal clone command, with a replace option, the air blocks will remove the existing sandstone blocks that were here previously. But if we use the mass mode, the air blocks will be ignored and the sandstone blocks that were here previously will stay. And so if we now copy that area over the bedrock platform using the mass mode, only the blocks that are left in the corner there from our targeted selection will be placed at the new position. Everything else will be ignored. And so even though we are actually copying an exactly sized cube, a very big sized cube, from this position to another, it seems like we are only copying a very specific targeted area. And now I think uh, we should have a look at some of the details of the user interface. First we want to determine the area that we want to clone. And for that we need an item frame called Marker with a capital M. Every other item frame will be ignored by the system and works like any other normal item frame. Only the marker item frame has some special abilities. And if we place it now against the block in negative X or Z, it will mark the block we place it on as position 1 of our selection. So currently this is 
the starting point of our selection area. Now we need to add a section uh, position 2, second selection, and we do that by placing it against positive x or z. Then we mark this block here as the second position. So our selection goes more currently from that block up to including this block up here. Let's see, we'll notice that we get a tarot message and an item frame called lock that appears inside our item frames. That's because this is a valid selection. This can now be copied. If we would place the item frames, for example, like this, so that some coordinates of position 2 are lower than coordinates of position 1, then we can't copy it. That's not a valid selection, at least not for this system, and so nothing appears inside, and we get no terror message. As soon as we make it correctly here, we get marked with a locked item frame inside, and we get the terror message for copy. When we now copy, we get, of course, the message here that tells us how many blocks were copied and the exact dimensions. And if we want to now paste it, we use a silverfish called marker. Same name, just this time it's a silverfish spawn egg. If we place it down, we get now an area marked, which is exactly the size of the blocks that we would place in now if we click paste. And after we paste, the markers will disappear because we can't paste anything more inside now, unless we place a new silverfish again. So paste removes the marking for the pasting, but copying will still leave the item frames intact. Also, uh, the markings here, the size, will only show the size of the last thing that you actually copied over with the copy command. So if I just change the size of the selection here for the clone area, this won't change. Only after we copy actually something, the new size will appear here. And I think that's it for the interface here. Uh, maybe let's have a quick look at the command blocks. Alright, let's keep it quick and simple because the video is running long. We have four different sections here. Basically, each chunk represents a different purpose. We start here, where we have the setup that triggers or handles the markers. So it detects when we place down a marker item frame. It um, checks if the positions are valid. It renders the items. It updates them and all that stuff. Then in this area, we have the actual clone area. And here we have all the command blocks that clone the blocks to the Bedrock platform or to our destination. This big setup here with the hundreds of command blocks, or felt like hundreds of command blocks when I placed them, handle the cleaning on the roof, the processing. So in here we determine the size of our selection area and clear out everything that's not part of our selection. And the last part here is handling the destination particles. So when we place down the silverfish, and it updates uh, the size and everything. So yeah, four different parts, four different purposes. I won't go into detail here because that would take a long time. Not gonna do that in a video. But anyway, yeah. This is my easy clone interface. Hope you have fun with it. Um, I hope you can improve this. That worked last time pretty well. Would like to see a very compact one tick instant version of that. Anyway, thank you for watching. See you next time.